Welcome to the Daily Word for the season of Pentecost. Today's reading is from the Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 10, verses 24 to 33. Jesus said to the twelve, A disciple is not above the teacher, nor a slave above the master. It is enough for the disciple to be like the teacher, and the slave like the master. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebu, how much more will they malign those of his household? So have no fear of them, for nothing is covered up that will not be uncovered, and nothing secret that will not become known. What I say to you in the dark, tell in the light, and what you hear whispered, proclaim from the housetops. Do not fear those who will kill the body but cannot kill the soul. Rather, fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground unperceived by your father. And even the hairs of your head are all counted. So do not be afraid. You are of more value than many sparrows. Everyone, therefore, who acknowledges me before others, I also will acknowledge before my Father in heaven. But whoever denies me before others, I also deny before my Father in heaven. This is the word of the Lord. Fear not. When we talk about the life of faith, we usually associate it with worship, fellowship, church ministries and services. Especially in fellowship where brothers and sisters study the Bible together, pray for each other, watch over each other, help each other, and enjoy the friendship between brothers and sisters, as well as the joy of growing in faith and in the Holy Spirit together. This is a feature of church life and is valued by many brothers and sisters. Sometimes brothers and sisters are more eager to enjoy fellowship than worship. The New Testament, especially the book of Acts, also describes the establishment of the church. Worship and fellowship stand side by side. However, participation in worship and fellowship alone is not enough, nor is it the whole of the life of faith. Another important part of the life of faith that is not so easy, or sometimes even tempting to avoid or ignore, is the disciples' responsibility and mission in society and in the world. In another word, social witness. The, the lesson we are learning today from Matthew chapter 10 is an exhortation and reminder from Jesus as he sends his disciples to spread the word of the Lord, to persuade people to repent and convert and to lead them back to God. This is not an easy task for any disciple to do well. It could be an encouragement from Jesus to the disciples at a different time. And the author of the Gospel of Matthew has put these words together as a reminder to the disciples and to us. But regardless of when Jesus gave these exhortations, they show us that the life of faith involves preaching the gospel, practicing and teaching the truth, and bearing witness to that truth in society. These are the responsibilities and tasks of the disciples. It's not just to worship and enjoy fellowship, but it's also to give witness. In Jesus' exhortation, it is clear that Jesus is touching on the cost of discipleship and the will and attitude to follow the Lord, to be a witness for the Lord and to stand firm for the truth in the world. Now, one must be prepared to reject and be attacked, to be intimidated, to be slandered by those who oppose the Lord Jesus. The words of the Lord are his own experiences. This is why Jesus says, Whatever happens to the student is the same as the teacher, and what happens to the servant is the same as the master. As Jesus came, so shall the disciples go. Jesus never avoided talking about difficulties that the disciples would encounter, and Jesus never said that what he suffered, the disciples would avoid suffering. For if you are serious about practicing the truth and you're willing to stand firm in the way of the Lord, you are bound to encounter these things. Because Jesus encountered these things. These things are definitely not easy or light. Perhaps we may ask, this part of the life of faith is too difficult, especially in an increasingly secularized society or in places where there is totalitarianism. To uphold the truth will inevitably lead to destructive consequences for you 
And if you give in, you'll be trapped in the dilemma of double dealing. But if we continue reading through Matthew's, Matthew's chapters 10 and 11, we will see that Jesus had in mind, especially in the last two sentences of chapter 11, where he said, take my yoke upon you and learn from me. Then you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. If this is the case, as believers, we must have the mental quality to suffer for the Lord. Otherwise, how can we continue with our testimony? Of course, Jesus understood the weaknesses of man and the will of the disciples needs to be strengthened in order to do the work for which they have been sent. So in the following passage, Jesus says to his disciples three times, don't be afraid. This commandment to not fear is the will and attitude of practicing faith. It's only when we are not afraid that we'll experience the ease of the Lord's yoke and the lightness of his burden. What do we need to be afraid of? To put Jesus' words another way, we are afraid of being smeared, slandered, wronged, just as Jesus was falsely accused of casting out demons and healing people uh, through Beelzebub, the king of demons. We are also afraid of losing our reputation. We're afraid of being um, unremembered or, or disappearing like smoke or dust or losing our value. But what does Jesus say? The deceitful things will be revealed on the last day. So don't fear those who kill the body and can do no harm to the eternal soul. In the kingdom of God, faithful servants whom God has regarded as precious will be remembered in God's heart. Not one of them will be lost. Not one of them will be missing. So fear not. Fear not because we are God's people, so that we can preach the truth and proclaim the gospel without shame or cowardice, without yielding to the forces that stand in the way of truth, without resisting the abandonment of the principles of faith, and without obeying the atheists and those who worship idols. Don't be afraid as Jesus' personal encouragement and inspiration to his disciples, reminding them that in front of a crooked generation, it is the word of the Lord Jesus that speaks, not the voice of any person on earth. Let's have a time of reflection. When you are faced with dilemmas in life, how do you make choices? What's the basis of your choices? What do you think and feel when you hear the words, don't be afraid from Jesus? How do you think you can practice your witnessing? Let us pray. Lord Jesus, when you said, do not fear, the hairs of your head have been counted. You are more valuable than many sparrows. Lord, we thank you. Thank you that you promise that you will strengthen our hearts, that we don't need to fear as we give witness to you. May we not be afraid in testifying to the truth and not afraid of anyone who may harm us. Give us peace, help us to seek protection from you, remembering that you suffered for our sake. May the Son and the Father and the Holy Spirit, the only God, live and reign together forever and ever. Amen.